Hey everyone, we are Acrovan Adventures and today we are going to walk you through our entire electrical system, what we chose and why we chose it. Most of our electrical system is an out of the box kit by GoPower. It is the Solar Elite package and has almost everything that you need. We did add a few things and of course our own end appliances and outlets, things like that. But overall, most of our electrical setup is the GoPower Solar Elite package. So to start things off, we are going to start with our main power source, our battery. This is a 250 amp hour lithium battery by GoPower. We love having the lithium battery. It is much smaller than our previous AGM batteries. It's a lot lighter and it packs quite a bit more punch. These 250 amp hours are more than enough for what we need. And it's really great having a lithium battery. There's tons of benefits, which we'll talk through in another video. Moving on from our battery and right front and center, you will see that we have a master kill switch here. It's really important to have a way to shut off your electrical system so that you can work on it. But also in case of an emergency, we can disconnect the power and we know that there's gonna be no electricity flowing to the rest of our system. You can see that we also have a fuse installed here. We have quite a bit of fuses in our build for safety. We always follow the instructions and the recommendations there, but this is the first of many that you're gonna see. So from our kill switch, you'll see that we have this big cable which actually runs to our positive bus bar. From the bus bar, we have connected any and all of our main appliances that need to use electricity from our system. So from our positive bus bar, we have our DC fuse block, our inverter slash charger, and our DC to DC battery charger. Before we go any further down those components, I do wanna show you that we have our solar charge controller connected actually at the kill switch. On the roof, we have two 190 watt solar panels for a total of 380 watts of solar. That is usually more than enough to charge our battery here, but if it's cloudy for a long time or if we're parked in the shade or if we're parked under something that is blocking the sun, we of course need a different way to charge the battery, which is why we have the DC to DC charger and also short power. Up here in the back, we have our solar charge controller. That actually regulates the flow of electricity from the solar panels and converts it into the correct voltage and amperage to actually charge our battery. There is a screen on there, so it could be nice to install that in a more accessible spot, but this package also came with a different monitor, um, which allows us to control the inverter and charger as well as see our battery percentage from a more accessible location. One thing to note in our electrical system is that we installed our solar panels connected to the same side of our kill switch as our battery. In some electrical systems and diagrams, you may see the solar charge controller connected to the positive bus bar, but there are some important considerations if you do that. Namely, if you have your solar panels connected via your charge controller to your positive bus bar, and then you have your kill switch somewhere else, when you turn off the kill switch from your battery, you actually could still be getting electricity from your solar panels. Which means that if you're working on your electrical system during the day, your kill switch will not actually disconnect all of your electricity, potentially creating a dangerous situation for yourself or others who are working on your electrical system. For that reason, we've chosen to install our solar charge controller on the same side of our kill switch as the battery, which does mean that if it's sunny and we turn off our charge controller, the solar panel could actually still be charging our battery while the rest of our electrical system is completely disconnected from electricity. So as a quick recap of our solar panels, we have the solar panels coming from the roof, going into our charge controller here, and our charge controller is connected directly to the battery, meaning that it's on the same side of the kill switch as the battery, which means that if I turn off the kill switch, there will be no electricity possibly flowing to the rest of my system, but the solar panels could still be charging my battery. Now, we also wanted to make sure that there was some kind of disconnect between our solar panels and our battery in the case that we want to disconnect that and make sure there's no electricity coming in. For that reason, we did install two DC breakers, um, one between the solar panels and the charge controller, which means that if I break the circuit, there will be no electricity flowing from the solar panels into my charge controller. Basically the same thing as if it was nighttime or I completely covered up my solar panels. Also, we installed a breaker for safety between my battery and the charge controller itself. This is per the owner's manual's recommendation. You need to make sure there is a breaker between your power source and the charge controller. This is a little bit different than the normal owner's manual, but we wanted to make sure that we had a lot of ways to disconnect the electricity and be safe uh, in our system. So moving on from our solar setup, the next most important piece we have is this DC fuse block. 
So this fuse block is rated for 100 amps, therefore we have a 100 amp fuse between our bus bar and the fuse block itself. And this is where we plug in all of our appliances and end electrical components that run off of DC power. So on this we have space for 12 different individual circuits. Um, we have separated things like our fridge, our composting toilet fan, our lights, stuff like that. Each one has its own fuse in there, um, which means if we overload the circuit, the fuse will break and we might lose power for that one component temporarily. But we can quickly replace that fuse and then reset our system uh, after something like that happens. You'll notice that I put it front and center. That is by design because in our last build, it was very hard to get to. That's not ideal. So we put it front and center so that if we did have to change a fuse, we could get to it very quickly. Also, when it comes to wiring, this is where you're gonna do most of your tedious little wiring. So it's quite a bit easier to do that when it's right in front of you than if you have to kind of lean over or reach all the way in the back. So for your electrical system, I do recommend that your kill switch and your DC fuse block are in very accessible locations so that you can get to them in an emergency or if you need to do any kind of maintenance. Moving on, the next big thing that uses electricity in our system is our inverter charger. So this inverter charger is one unit. It's actually a 2000 watt inverter and it's rated for up to 100 amps of charging. That is quite a bit. There's probably no time ever that we're gonna need 100 amps coming into our system from the charger. If you plug into a normal house outlet, you're only gonna get 15 amps. And if you're parked at some kind of campground or something like that, you may go up to 30 amps. But rarely, rarely have I ever seen 100 amps coming in. So let's talk about the difference between that. An inverter charger does two things. The charger portion allows me to take electricity from the grid, like a house outlet, and then actually put it into my system to charge the battery. You might also hear that called shore power. And for us, this is our least common method of charging our batteries because we're usually parked off grid. We're not at somebody's house. We're not at a campground. So we kind of rely on our solar panels and our alternator charger. But if we're at a friend's house and maybe we're parked under some trees or parked in one spot for quite a long time, it is really nice to be able to plug into a house outlet and make sure our battery stays nice and charged. The inverter portion of this is what converts this 12 volt DC battery into alternating current that you would see in a normal house outlet. Uh, in the US, it's that three prong outlet. In other countries, it looks a little bit different, but same concept applies. AC power tends to be a little bit less efficient due to natural loss during any kind of electrical system. So for that reason, we've chosen to use mostly 12 volt ports, outlets, and components in our build. However, it's really important that we do have access to a three prong outlet to charge things like our laptops, run a blender, and run our electric water kettle so that we can make coffee in the morning. So our inverter is connected directly to our positive bus bar. We again have a fuse in there. This time it's rated to 200 amps. That is quite a lot. One thing to note is that for inverters, they have a special kind of fuse that you should use because it trips in a different way, specifically for inverters because they kind of operate a little bit differently than some other electrical components. So in your system, make sure you're using the proper fuses for your component. In this case, we're using what's called a class T fuse for an inverter specifically. Now, our GoPower Elite package actually came with a 300 amp hour fuse, which is great, but our bus bar is only rated to 250 amps, which means that we didn't want there to be any possibility for the bus bar to go over 250 amps. For that reason, we chose to put a 200 amp fuse, which means that if we ever exceeded 200 amps, the fuse would break and we wouldn't risk any kind of danger for our electrical system. From the inverter itself is where you actually need to wire things a little bit differently. You need three wires. You might hear it called 12-3 or something like that. But this is where we've actually converted from DC power into alternating current. For that, you need an AC breaker box. You might hear it called a sub panel, but that's what you'll see right here. Again, these are important to be in some kind of accessible location. So if they were to trip, you can reset them. Or if you want to make sure there's no electricity flowing to any sort of electrical outlets, you can turn them off at your convenience. So from the inverter, we go into that AC breaker box. And then from that breaker box, we go into our actual outlets. Those outlets can be wired one after another in series. So you're not limited to the number of breakers but you do wanna make sure you're uh, following safe practices when you're installing electrical systems like this. In our case, we have two individual AC circuits. 
one controls the outlets on the kitchen side and one controls the outlets on our driver side. We have a total of three AC outlets. And an important thing to note here is that you do want to make sure you're using a GFCI electrical outlet on any of your AC alternating current electrical circuits. GFCI outlets are the kind that have the little test and reset buttons on them. They have their own internal breaker because they're typically installed places that could get wet, like your bathroom or your kitchen, and that's your first layer of protection in case something happens to your circuit. We recommend installing that in a vehicle, like an RV or a bus, because it's very humid in here, you might spill something, you don't know what's going to happen, so we just want to make sure we have that extra layer of safety in our system. We do have an entire video to show you how to install that linked up here. The only other major component that we have in our electrical system actually is behind this solar charge controller. That is our DC to DC battery charger. We have a 60 amp Renogy DC to DC charger. And what that does is it connects our house battery, this lithium one, to our vehicle's battery, allowing one to charge the other. That DC to DC charger is also configured in a way that it knows only when the vehicle is running to connect the two batteries. This is really important because if the batteries were connected while they were not running, we might be using our vehicle's battery to potentially run our other components. That could lead to a situation where we deplete our vehicle battery and then can't turn our car on when we want to go somewhere. So the DC to DC charger is designed to connect your batteries, allowing your vehicle's battery to charge your house battery, but only when the vehicle is running. For every red positive wire in our system, it's also important to have a black negative wire. For that reason, we have a negative bus bar installed on that far side. And one important thing to note here is that your negative bus bar should be grounded to your vehicle ground, which is just the frame of the vehicle. This is important because your vehicle's battery is connected to the frame of your vehicle as a ground. You want your house battery also to be connected to your vehicle as a ground to prevent any safety issues that may arise if you have two independently operating systems. Basically, you don't want this system to be operating completely independent of the other, because if you were to accidentally cross the two together and they were not sharing a common ground, it could result in some kind of electrical hazard. So for this, we have a fairly large 2 aught wire connected from our bus bar to the actual frame itself underneath the bus. It's connected with a gigantic bolt um, onto the bare metal, and that allows us to make sure that this system is grounded completely to the vehicle system. So some important things to note in the system, because we have a lithium battery, we need to make sure that all of our other components can handle a connection to a lithium battery. Lithium batteries operate at a slightly different voltage than other types of batteries, and every component in here actually needs some kind of small configuration to tell it which type of battery we're running. So our DC to DC charger has to be approved for lithium batteries, same with your solar charge controller, and your inverter. So when you're designing your electrical system, make sure you're buying components that can work with the type of battery that you have. Again, of course, you'll see that we have fuses all throughout the system. They're all rated for different amperage, and that is by design of the specific component. So our inverter has a different size fuse than our solar charge controller, which is different than our DC fuse block here. They all are rated for specific amounts, and it is really important that you do follow those limits. Another thing to be aware of to make sure you're really safe is that you're using the appropriate sized wires for any length that you have connected between two things. So you'll notice that we have some gigantic wires connected between our battery and our switch, between our inverter and our fuse block, but we have some smaller wires between things like our lights and our fuse block here, or even the wire between our DC fuse block and our bus bar can be a little bit smaller than other wires throughout the system. These wires are also protected by those fuses, um, and they have to be designed in a way that work well with each other. Throughout our entire electrical system, we were really diligent and careful to make sure that we use the proper connections. So we have huge lug terminals for our big wires. We have small ring terminals for our other wires. They're all sealed with some heat shrink that kind of operate as a water barrier between that junction. If you're unsure of which wire size you're going to need, we will link a resource in the description below, or you can talk to a licensed electrician. Throughout our entire electrical system, we are using stranded wires because solid copper wires can become brittle over time with vibrations. Since you're in a moving vehicle, this will certainly be subject to vibrations, and we don't want to risk any electrical hazard. Therefore, we used marine-grade stranded wire 
all throughout our build. In marine applications, it's actually required that you use stranded wires. Um, in RVs, it's highly suggested, so that's what we did here. One other quick thing is you'll see we have these tiny, ugly little walls. These are designed to make sure nothing bumps into any of our electrical components. And this one is going above our positive and negative battery terminals so that there's no chance something accidentally touches both of those at the same time. The last thing you may notice, believe it or not, is that this system is actually designed in a fairly organized way, in my opinion. Maybe that's not true. But we have secured all of our wires down with some kind of insulated staple or a cable clamp. These are designed to keep the wire in place in a moving vehicle. Things jiggle, they vibrate all the time, and you don't want them to vibrate out of their position. That's why we have these staples installed or our C-clamps, just to really make sure that things are staying in their proper place. So as a quick recap, let's talk through all the components in this system. So this is our 250 amp hour lithium battery, which flows into our master kill switch. From the kill switch, we have connection to our solar charge controller, which is receiving power from two 190 watt solar panels up on the roof. This also goes to our positive bus bar, where we have connected our inverter charger, as well as our DC to DC battery charger, and finally our DC fuse block located right here. This DC fuse block is what goes to all of our individual electrical components, such as our fridge, toilet, etc. And our inverter is wired with alternating current to our AC breaker box there. And from the breaker box, it goes to our three prong AC outlets. All right, so that's a wrap. That's our entire electrical system. Again, most of these components came from the GoPower Solar Elite package, including our battery, our inverter charger, our solar charge controllers, the solar panels themselves some of the monitors installed throughout here, some of the wires, connections, and even some of the fuses. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, check out our other build videos. We are Acrovan Adventures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.